Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. NFL players hang heads in shame after seeing flag properly respected at World Series last night. The NFL continues to sink lower and lower. Their ratings are in the toilet. Attendance is down. Sponsors are fleeing. To be fair the NFL has long-term contracts and usually pre-sells tickets so outside of the lost concession sales the financial hit has not been huge, yet. But if this continues at years and everything may be undone. Contracts have odd clauses, fans don't renew season tickets, advertisers won't run ads because they don't want to be associated with that toxic brand. The owners know this which is why they are freaking. The players have no clue and stumble around as if their paychecks are guaranteed. They are not. Last night Major League Baseball put the NFL to shame and showed them the proper way to respect the flag and celebrate the national anthem. First, not one player took a knee. Take note NFL. Second, was a beautiful national anthem performed by gospel singer Keith Williams Jr. complete with a flyover saluting our flag and everyone who respects it as grand finale. But baseball wasn't done showing the NFL how to properly respect the flag. In the seventh inning stretch, when they usually play Take Me Out to the Ball Game or some other song, they pulled a surprise move. A group of U.S. soldiers took the field as Petty Officer 2nd Class Mike Dallager brought the house down and sang, God Bless America. Share this if you agree with Billy Ray and let's send the NFL players a message. H-T-I-J-R Ted Cruz comes forward sends Corker and Flake scurrying back under rocks they crawled from. Ted Cruz does not suffer fools, and in normal times he uses his devastating wit and keen insights to destroy any liberal in his path. But these are not normal times. These days are fraught with peril because as soon as the GOP got what they wanted, total control of the government, they got cold feet and forgot themselves. And more importantly they forgot the voters who gave them this incredible once in a lifetime opportunity, to fix the mess the Democrats, and GOP establishment, made. This chance will not come again anytime soon. As Ted Cruz knows. And he has been shocked to watch the GOP go after Trump rather than solve the problems we put them there to fix. So he came out swinging today and sent the GOP turncoats Jeff Flake and Bob Corker scurrying back under the rocks they crawled out of to attack President Trump. It's like you're back in June, you're high, we've got a job to do, damn it, and so all of this nonsense, I got nothing to say on it. Everyone shut up and do your job, is my view, Cruz said before sending Corker and Flake back from where they came. Well I think it's unfortunate the nastiness that pervades Washington now and political battles of personality that consume seemingly every minute of the media attention and an awful lot of time and energy here in this town. Correct. Jeff Flake is selling his book at just the exact moment he went all crazy on the Senate floor. Guess what happened after he attacked Trump? Sales went through the roof. As for Bob Corker, Cruz has some final words for him and the rest of the establishment. All right big boys, we got a majority and you know who it is who is screwing up governing? It's the so-called elder statesman moderates. Correct. The establishment statesmen like Corker and Flake who think they know better than the voters and Trump couldn't get anything done for all their years of experience. Really all they have done is get famous off Trump, and in that regard they remind me a heck of a lot like Frederica Wilson. If the GOP doesn't shape up they will not be the last to go, share if you agree. Before flying to Dallas, Trump turned to press and dropped truth about Russia and him. The tables have been turned. In a press conference this Wednesday, Trump blasted Hillary Clinton over the new revelations that she helped fund the anti-Trump dossier this week. They're embarrassed by it, but I think it's a disgrace, 
Trump told reporters, before heading to Texas for a briefing on Hurricane Harvey recovery efforts and a Republican fundraiser. It's a very sad commentary on politics in this country. Ivanka Trump discovers classy way to silence CNN and turn Hollywood's scorn into badge of honor. Ivanka Trump just broke her silence on the relentless media attacks against her family. Appearing on Fox News, Ivanka spoke about the toll the media and Hollywood's attacks have had on her family. Look, she knows she is fair game. All the Trumps do. They have always been fair game for the media. But so consumed and blinded by hatred, the media is not playing fair. They will literally do anything to try to stop Trump. And if that includes going after Baron Trump so be it," Ivanka said. I'd be disingenuous if I said, the harsh attacks against her, didn't affect me. I think, though, at the end of the day the real people suffering in this country are not me and my family. We can take it. Ivanka went on to show the whiny Hollywood crowd, did you see how they all tried to run and hide from the Harvey Weinstein scandal? Dash how to handle the spotlight with grace and class. The millions of Americans we saw across this country who are addicted to opioids or have lost a child to opioid abuse, who have lost their jobs because their industry can longer be competitive. These are the people who are really suffering. If we have to take a few body blows in advocating for those men and women, I think everyone in my family and everyone in this administration is honored to do it," she added. Correct. Ivanka wears CNN, MSNBC and Hollywood's scorn like the badge of honor that it is. And boy does she wear it well. Share if you agree. With one sentence Trump just took down Jeff Flake seconds ago. It's a bloodbath. President Trump just hit back against Senator Jeff Flake after the Arizona Republic attacked him in a speech on the Senate floor. With one single sentence ruined this crazy idiot. The first time I saw him on television I assumed he was a Democrat, Trump told reporters. This is after a tweet this morning absolutely tearing up Jeff Flake. He made sure the whole nation knew about Flake's terrible approval rating. It's at 18%. Flake tore apart Trump during his speech on Tuesday and said that we must never adjust to the coarseness of our dialogue with the tone set up at the top. We must never regard as normal the regular and casual undermining of our democratic norms and ideals. We must never meekly accept the daily sundering of our country, the personal attacks, the threats against principles, freedoms and institution, the flagrant disregard for truth and decency, the reckless provocations, most often for the prettiest and most personal reasons, reasons having nothing whatsoever to do with the fortunes of the people that we have been elected to serve," he said. Share this if you think that Trump needs to keep on slaying these GOP rats like Jeff Flake. Let's make Jeff Flake famous like he wants to be. Comment Jeff Flake for Democrats below this. Roger Goodell struck down by TV execs plan to fix ratings mess that spells doom for NFL's future. Roger Goodell is not having a good month. The anti-flag protesters have taken over the asylum and Goodell has no idea what to do. The owners were called into a meeting to discuss what to do with these stubborn players. They came out with no solution but did, to Goodell's horror, delay his contract extension. In other words fix it Roger or find a new job. On top of that comes a shocking new report from Sports Business Daily that confirms the NFL's worst fears. Network television executives are desperate to solve the problem of the NFL's falling ratings and with no solution, unless the players won't respect the flag, they are looking at cutting gains from their broadcast schedule. This would be a devastating blow and would hit them right in the wallet. Because the owners depend on huge TV contracts to pay the players their huge salaries. If TV starts cutting back the whole entire league will fill it. Most importantly the players. 
the executives are floating a proposal to cut Thursday night football from 18 games to just eight. According to the report, they also want to cut the early morning games from London, a key part of the NFL's expansion plans. The report goes on to terrify the NFL by noting that NFL ratings are down 7% from the same point last season and a whopping 18% compared to the 2015 season. But the news gets worse for the NFL. TV executives are in an absolute panic about the massive 11% ratings drop for the critical 18 to 34-year-old demographic group. When will the players come to their senses?